Hello everybody, in this week I'm going to be answering one of your uh, requests and some of you guys asked how can we parametrically uh, create uh, this loft for this facade. So this was a tutorial that I did a while back and when I was doing this tutorial I didn't create this surface in uh, Grasshopper. Uh, instead I used these plants to create this kind of uh, wavy surface. But this time I'm going to be showing you how uh, you can simply, you know, using some simple methods, uh, create similar effects. So uh, let's start. And as you can see, this is like the final result. Uh, and uh, let's let's just go through it and let's see uh, what it is. So first thing here, what I have, I have a, a single point. And what I did with this point, I just copied uh, a lot of times here in Y direction. So what is the concept behind this definition? The concept is the following. Uh, we want to have uh, the ability to randomly distribute these points in this direction and in this direction. So we want to say, okay, I want this guy to move here and I want this guy to move here. And then I want this guy to move slightly there and then I want this guy to move there. So, and, and that's how we want to do for each one of these points. And we want to do this randomly so that all of these points are randomly distributed in both directions. And why are we doing this? We're doing this because we want to connect uh, these points, but we want to use a component called an ERBS, which is going to give us the interpolated path between all of these points. This means that this curve will depend based on how these points are interacting. So that's, that's why we are uh, creating uh, this kind of effect. And that's why these points are actually the keys to influence uh, the movement and the wave of our curve. Uh, later on, we will want to use, of course, the same thing on the top. And then we, uh, we want to randomize the movement of that curve as well. And then just loft them and connect them and create this surface. So that's the concept. And now let's let's see how it's done. So once, uh, once we used here the move, we used it uh, in the y direction because we want uh, to move this point in this direction. That's y direction. And we use the series component to give it some values. So these are the values that came out. And that's pretty much uh, the values that uh, these points are distributed at. So for example, I can see here zero is zero and then one is five, which means this one is five units moved uh, in y direction. And then the second one is 10. So the second one is moved 10 units. And that's what these numbers mean. And you control the distance you control uh, the difference between 0 and 5 from uh, from here. This is called step. And it says here 5. And that's why the step uh, controls the, uh, you can say like the, the density of these points. So for example, if you put this to, let's say 2, you can see that the density got much smaller. But the overall number, which is the count of 30, stay the same. So if we increase the number to, let's say, 50, you will see that this curve will become much bigger, but the density will be the same. So uh, you can play around with these guys and then you see the result that you get. So uh, you can either increase here the step or you can also increase the count or reduce the count, whatever whatever you want to uh, to feel like you want to play with. So uh, that's, that's the beginning. Then once we have these uh, guys distributed, then we want uh, to move them now in the directions that we just talked about. So how do we do this? Uh, in order to move them in these directions, we're simply going to use, uh, in this case, okay, I'm gonna talk about this later. This is uh, this is going to be the movement in the in the Z direction. And this is the surface, uh, this is going to be the surface height. So we're gonna disregard this for now. And uh, let's focus on this next area. So. We have these guys and now we want to move them in these directions, but we want to move to move them randomly. And that's when uh, another move command comes in place. And this is what it does. So what we did here, we said, okay, I want to move all of these points. These are all the points. I want to move them in the random direction, but this is the direction I want you to take them in. It's X direction. So this is the target, the, the target motion. And we're saying it, okay, I want you to move them in X factor. And uh, then it's going to ask us, okay, but how you want to move them? And this is the, the result that we're going to get. So this guy is saying, okay, I want you to move 
point number zero this much and then I, I want you to move point number one minus this much and that's what's happening here you can see and uh, that's 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 the result that we got from this uh, area here so this is called a random component and what it does it actually mixes uh, a lot of values based on on the input so for example here is the input that we have we have input of the domain from 0 uh, from minus 4.1 to 4.1 so you simply give it uh, this domain and then you give it the number you give it the number of values that you want uh, you want uh, it to mix so in this case you want to use the same number of points because there is no point of mixing more than 20 points because that's that's how many points there is uh, to work with so that's why it's connected with the number of points uh, as the same as this count of this series and then this is the seed value that's pretty much uh, the type of randomness that you want to achieve here so for example if I change this seed from 12 to 15 then watch what happens you see this list of numbers there is 20 numbers total including zero it's just randomly changing and you can see in the screen how my 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 dots are also changing so take a look you can see that the randomness is like uh, distributed in uh, x direction. So I'm just simply moving them in x direction. And uh, let me uh, see what's what's happening here. So this is uh, self-explanatory. It's construct domain and it gives values. So in this case, we gave it a value of 4.1. And then we gave it here the value of minus 4.1. That's why we use the negative here. So this is the result. So we want this domain to be from zero point from sorry from minus 4.1 until 4.1 and that's what we see here that's why we use the negative here so that you, you want to distribute them uh, correctly in the same in the same kind of uh, wave wave pattern so in case you want this to be irregular you can of course say okay I don't want negative here I want something else you want let's say maybe something else so let's put the slider here and let's change it to a minimum to minus 10 and then click OK. Then if I move here to minus eight, then I'm gonna get a different kind of result. Here you can see my domain changed from minus eight to uh, to 4.1. So in this case, you can you can also play around with this, and uh, it, it really depends. But uh, uh, in case you want to use the same uh, the same domain, if you want to use the same distance on both on both sides, then you would use here the negative. Just place it here and connect it there. I have the domain from minus 4.1 to 4.1. Okay, let's increase this to maybe let's say six to get some uh, some different results. And seed, let's change to let's say five or something like this. Okay, so we have uh, we have that done. And now uh, what we need to do is uh, let's hide these guys and let's hide this point at the beginning. So we have our uh, our uh, points. How do we connect them? We simply use uh, the command uh, called an herbs curve and uh, we give it, we just connect uh, the, the vertices with the vertices here. The geometry is all the points and these are all these points that we just created and what this component does, it actually interpolates the curve between uh, these points. So you can see how smooth uh, the transition is. So that's uh, that's one way. The other way is to use uh, polyline. However, when you use the polyline, then you would get a little bit different result. You would get the straight the straight line like this. So we can experiment with that as well uh, later on. But let's see now what's going to happen here. I'm going to just copy it one more time here, and let's also use it for this guy later on. Okay. All right. So now. Once we have this uh, this interpolated point, we're simply going to do exactly the same. So we're, we're, we're copying the whole thing here one more time on the bottom. And we're, we're using the same, uh, the same number as, uh, as the number of count. And that's why here we have the same kind of points on the top. However, uh, that's why we used this, uh, this movement uh, on the top. That's why I said we're, we're gonna come, come back to this later. So what it is, it actually uh, moves this uh, initial point, the initial line of points, it moves it up in Z direction, you can see, and this is the surface height, this is the height of this 
element. If you change this, you will see that the height will change there. And now at this point, we are simply doing the same thing, just saying it, okay, I want you to distribute these guys. So let me show you. It's saying again, uh, I want you to distribute these points in these directions again. And based on, based on the randomness of this component, uh, of this component, I want you to also randomize it so it's not the same as the one on the bottom. So that's why we also have different kind of, distrib of distribution. And also you can also change this uh, domain here. It doesn't need to be 4.1. It can be, let's say, uh, 8. And now let's see, uh, let's see what we got here at the end. You can see that we got a different distribution of the points. And of course, uh, to finish off, we also get this curve. So we have this curve on the bottom and we have this curve on the top. And you can see that they are not the same. So let's see what's gonna happen if I change uh, the sliders a bit. So let's say that I want to change the seed. Uh, this is for the, for the top one. You can see that I'm changing the type of the curve here. Uh, on, on this one, I'm changing the bottom curve. On this one, I'm changing the, the distance. You can see how it's a bit smaller or bigger. And here as well changing the distribution and here is the the distribution of these points like you can you can call it like this is the length and you can see what it does and this is the uh, like the scale in scale out thing all right so that's uh, that's what we did here and uh, yeah this should also go in a group because we can control that and uh, to finish off we just connected these two guys with a loft and this is our surface that we got so by simply manipulating all these sliders, you can change change the type, the shape of this uh, of this uh, surface. Let's change a little bit of values. You can see I'm changing the bottom. Here I'm changing the top. Now I'm changing here the randomness. Here are the randomness as well. And here I'm changing the surface height up and down. So you can play around and get a sense of what is the nice surface that you want to achieve. And now let's just for fun let's let's try one more one more thing. Let's do the same loft, but with the polylines, and let's see the result. So I'm gonna do the polyline curve here and the polyline curve here. And let's see. You see what we got? We got similar type of surface, but it's not interpolated. It's just uh, straight uh, connected from a bottom point to the top point. And also let's. Let's play around as well to see what kind of results we can get. You can see it's like dancing there on the top and on the bottom. Here we change the height. Here we change the values. All right. So yeah, that would be it for this part of the tutorial. I hope that you found it valuable. If you found this uh, tutorial interesting, I have something uh, that is a little bit more advanced. It's the same kind of definition, just upgraded and it has a little bit more options than the one that we just went through. So in this definition, we added a couple of additional elements, including a graph mapper. So what this graph mapper does, it actually tells our uh, curve of what shape, of what overall shape you'd like it to be. So for example, if I change this point here, you will see how our facade is changing based on this, on this graph here. So it still has the randomness, that we gave it before, and this is the randomness that is controlled from this uh, from this component. But we also can control now uh, the overall shape. And uh, just to sketch this, it's like okay, we, we we have some some graph, for example, this one. But now uh, we gave it the domain, and we told it, okay, I want you to change the points only in this domain. So I want you to distribute the points on this uh, x and y but uh, this time don't go uh, above these limits. So that's pretty much uh, what this does. So it tells it, okay, I want uh, only to move the points in uh, close proximity to this uh, curve so that I can control the overall shape that I have there. So that's, uh, that's what's new. And, and then of course, uh, you can still change the height, you can change the, uh, the curve's length. For example, I can uh, lower the height here I can bring the, the scaling, let's say four, I can uh, stretch it out or stretch it inward like this. And uh, it's, it's pretty much uh, flexible so you can create 
uh, anything that uh, that you think is an interesting uh, interesting uh, study. And of course, let's let's bring this back. And one more thing here, I want to show you is that uh, I also included in this uh, definition uh, the ability to change uh, to add some divisions. So, for example, let's say that this is our surface, and uh, this is the final result. Let me show you. So uh, we actually uh, divided this surface, and this is the division of the of the surface. So let's say if we go 250, you will get 250 divisions and we'll get different panels here. And now, of course, if you want to extrude this away further, you can do you can do so here. And now you're getting a little bit different result. But you can see that all of these extrusions are going from the normal of that surface. So that's uh, that's an interesting uh, an interesting example that I wanted to share as well. So if this is something that you'd be interested in, if you want to see this more advanced tutorial, uh, you can check it out on my Patreon page. The link is in the first comment below the video. And for only five dollars a month, you can get access to all of these uh, tutorials and all of my project files and support me that way to continue to create uh, this kind of content for you. One last thing, I'd like to give a special thank you to my Patreon supporters here on the side as you're helping me on my mission to spread the knowledge of Ryan and Grasshopper and reach as many architects as possible. So if you'd like to join my mission, please like this video, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and share it with our fellow architects. So yeah, thank you and take care.